Hey, good morning YouTube. So today we're going to check out a new place, but it's about five minutes away. And on the way there, I wanted to catch you up on a little field trip I went on last weekend out to the Milan Tobacconist in Roanoke, Virginia. Now Milan Tobaccos, you probably heard of them. Um, some of you probably haven't though, but they're most famous for their aromatics. And I went up and checked out that store and talked with the owner, Dave Meyer, who was very gracious to uh, take 20 minutes to sit down with me so I could ask him a few questions. What really surprised me about Dave was when I called him up to see if I can come out there and do that, he was really surprised that anybody would be interested. And I told him that, you know, there's a small YouTube community, maybe not so small, that is just infinitely curious about all things tobacco. We want to know, you know, little, little tips and tricks about how tobacco is blended, um, the history of certain blends, and basically everything in between. The first question I asked him was, has he seen the demographics change over the last couple years in his average either pipe buyer or pipe tobacco buyer? And his answer kind of surprised me. Here's what he said. Um, I've noticed um, a younger generation um, to get it, to gain interest in pipe smoking. Mm -hmm. um, they have a different a different approach to pipe smoking. What is that approach? Well, here? they seem more methodical about it. They really want to know more about like uh, the different kind of briars and what makes this pipe better than that pipe. Okay. And they want to know more about what goes into the blend and why is this blend different than that to where the more season. So the next question I asked Dave had to do with experimenting with new blends. I asked him if he ever created a blend that, despite all his expectations, actually took off and became one of his best sellers. And he had a great story. Uh, during the course of that story, I found out that his shop takes uh, requests for custom blending. And here's a little story about one of his customers who asked him to create a blend that Dave ended up liking. He then ended up selling. And despite everything he believes, uh, actually ended up being one of his biggest sellers. So check this one out. Okay. You know, um, a lot of times I spend a lot of time trying to get a blend right for somebody right. and I'll get it and then nothing will ever become of it. That right. just never goes anywhere. So Has, have you had any big surprises? Like the one that you blended and thought, eh, maybe it'll sell okay, but it took off bigger than you thought. Well, yeah, like our colonial pastime, which is now one of our best sellers. That was an example of one? Yeah, yeah. it's a customer of ours over in England. Okay. So he called up and he, it's funny how this one came to be really because um, he was an internet customer and he had been back and forth um, conversing with Renee, my wife, mm -hmm. and he asked her if we could come up with a blend that um, had a, it was, it was, uh, had some aromatic qualities to it, but he wanted it to have English. We, we call that blend a hybrid blend because mm -hmm. it's kind of like a cross between an English and an aromatic. Um, so my wife actually was the one that kind of got that whole thing going and she was the one that, um, kind of came up with the concept for the blend and then we all kind of worked on it and fine-tuned it um, and um, he, he loved it he loved the blend so he asked us if we could call it across the pond and uh, <clears throat> we couldn't because somebody else already yeah, has right. that, that, that Fraud, Fraud Morton across the pond right yeah. right right so um, you sent it back to him he loved it you guys kind of liked it so you put yeah it for sale and yeah well what happened was I you know we all thought it was a pretty good blend yeah. so we, we we made it in larger quantities right. and then um, I just started giving samples to some of our different pipe smokers and they're like man this is really good so yeah we just made it a blend and uh, so today I'm coming to you from the London Bridge pub you can see the sign behind me it's another great place here in downtown Raleigh they got an awesome back patio, as you can see. And, you know, one of the last questions I asked Dave toward the end of the interview had to do with the history of the shop and the history of those tobaccos. Uh, Dave took me in the back room where he blends his tobaccos, and it's a great picture. I'm going to insert a picture here. And the first thing he showed me was the original note cards that have been passed down through the generations with the recipes on them. And you can see that here. And then the next thing he showed me was the old-time blending machine that he uses. Now, it looks like an old barrel. Um, it looks like an old drum. And if you look very closely at this picture at the bottom right, you're going to see a little electrical motor. And that electrical motor, uh, Dave said, was actually taken off a World War II airplane. This gives you an idea of the rustic nature in which these tobaccos are blended. Dave then told me about one of his oldest blends, one of those that was passed down all the way from the original owner, all the way in the early 1900s. So here's a little story about that blend. 
you know, some of these blends go way back. Mm -hmm. They go back to the early days of the Mylan business. Is there one that is the oldest? Just yeah, well, we have one called Ravada. Okay. And if you break down that word, it stands for R-O, Roanoke, Virginia, Daddy. Okay. <laughs> so it was the Mylan's father's, the original founder of the store's blend. Okay. So we're still making it to this, to, you know, we're still making that blend today. Um, and it's got, you have to make two blends just to get a tobacco, a tobacco that goes into this blend. <laughs> so I have to make uh, a blend called Oasis and then I have to make another blend called salt and pepper, uh, which the Mylans created kind of like food seasoning. If you think about it in terms of salt and pepper for food, right. um, I have to make those two blends just to have some of the components to make this Ravada. They act as condiments to the Right, exactly. Okay. So basically, Very interesting. yeah, whenever I make that, it's a lot more time consuming than if I'm just blending something that only has two or three types of tobacco in it. Right. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I want to give a special thanks to Dave Meyer. Um, as you can see from the footage, Dave was a gracious host. The one thing you did not see is the fact that all this happened after hours. Uh, his shop shuts down at 2 o'clock, and he gave me between 2 and 2.30. So everything you just saw was on his own time, and I'm definitely appreciative of that. If you've never had a Milan tobacco before, definitely give him a shot. Uh, check him out on tobacco reviews. They're highly reviewed, and they have more than a couple dozen. So if you're an aromatic smoker, definitely check them out. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching. I definitely appreciate it and I appreciate all your support. Uh, this idea of you know interviewing brick and mortar owners and pipe makers and tobacconists and blenders is something I'm very interested in. I like the idea there's a dialogue as opposed to a monologue. And I'm gonna keep doing it and try to, try to strike a balance. Uh, the one thing I think about when I reach out to, to guys like this is the fact that I definitely am imposing on their time. You know, these are guys that are working. But you know, I think that there's an opportunity there to both tell their story, because there's a lot of people that want to know, as well as try to make it efficient on their time to, to not be too much of a burden. So I'm trying to strike that balance. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and let me know that you like it. And I'll keep doing it. So until next time, we'll see you later. Thanks again.